are there alternative options for specialist doctors from overseas to work in Australia? Well, yes, there are, and I'm going to tell you about them in this next video. Hello YouTube, I'm Dr. Anthony Llewellyn, I'm the career doctor, I'm here on YouTube to help you manage your career. So I've had quite a few questions or requests from doctors to talk about the other pathway for specialists here in Australia. It's called the short term specialist pathway and it's not for everyone but it is a pathway that you might want to investigate if you're wanting to work as a specialist here in Australia. I've done a number of videos about the specialist assessment pathway or the specialist pathway, but it's important to know that there is another option called this short-term specialist training pathway. You can see some information here on the Medical Board of Australia about it, and you can also see here that in the various colleges' uh, web pages, just like they have information for specialist pathway assessment for IMGs, there's usually some information and a, a form and an application process for how you can apply for the short-term specialist training pathway. So what is the short-term specialist training pathway? Well, to put it simply, it's an opportunity for you to work in a specialty field in Australia for a maximum of two years, and it's really set up to be an adjunct or a top up or uh, add on to the training that you've undertaken in your own country. So it's meant to be helpful for your own practice in your own country. So it's not a route to working permanently as a doctor in Australia, and nor is a route to becoming recognised as a specialist. In fact, if you read the details under the Medical Board of Australia, they specifically say that any experience that you do under the short-term specialist training pathway cannot count towards being recognised as a specialist. So why would you do it if that's the case? Well, there are a number of doctors who just want to come to Australia for a short period of time to actually get a different sort of experience. And the people that best, or the doctors that best fit this pathway are generally doctors who are either kind of towards the end of completing their specialist training in their own country, what we would call an advanced trainee here, or doctors who've recently finished their specialist training elsewhere and would like to get some additional top-up experience here in Australia. The types of jobs that you end up going into tend to be the, well they are actually, the advanced training jobs or what we might call a senior registrar job, or perhaps occasionally a fellow job. So they're not consultant level jobs, they're kind of one rung below them and they are trained and they are do, do um, receive supervision. However, as I said, it is time limited and there is a process for applying. You have to demonstrate that you've got a reasonable amount of knowledge and training so far to justify going into one of those positions. There's actually been a long history and tradition of allowing uh, training doctors and recently completed specialists from overseas coming to Australia to get up, so get some top up additional training. The, and there have been previous schemes, there was one called the postgraduate training registration or something like that. The problem is with all those pathways to registration, what's happened is that doctors will come via that pathway and then seek to obtain either general registration through what's now called the standard pathway process or specialist registration through the specialist pathway process. And this registration is not set up to do that. That doesn't mean, however, that you can't still apply for either of those pathways. So you, can't, you can still come and do that training under short-term specialist training pathway and go through the AMC exam process or go through the specialist pathway process. But that's a whole different process and uh, a whole different form of registration. And as I said, the experience that you do in Australia won't be counted by the college towards your assessment if you're going through the specialist pathway assessment. Short-term specialist training in terms of getting approved is probably a little bit easier than the actual specialist pathway. In terms of the main barrier, again, the main barrier is, as per usual, actually finding a position. There are some fees that you have to pay to be assessed by the college or the colleges, uh, but really the barrier is then getting a job. Again, in terms of your prospects, if you are a pretty good candidate for short-term specialist training, you may well find, particularly towards the ends of the calendar years and halfway through the year where there are gaps in the current advanced training ranks, that there are opportunities that open up for you to find a position because often hospitals are looking to fill some of those positions with some form of temporary workforce, um, which this scheme neatly fits. So that's the short-term specialist training pathway in a bit of a brief nutshell. 
you may have some more questions about it, so feel free to drop me a question in the description below. Leave a like if you liked the video, subscribe if you liked more than one, turn on notifications if you've seen more than three, and I will see you in the next video.